it's been a, a, a process that has gone over three years with Mino, and I've been working on this idea of symbols for a long time. So one of the things that's uh, unique to the symbol is the edge. It's a relatively soft edge. The symbol has what's called a wobble in it on the edge. That allows the low overtones to speak well, but still have clarity. Very often, when you play a cymbal like this on the edge, it washes out on you. So you can play here. And then if you don't like that sound, you can spin the cymbal. The edge is relatively soft. It allows for lower overtones to escape and speak. <clears throat> Gives the cymbal its roar. And also the wobble in the edge. Then as you move up the cymbal, it becomes more and more clear. And the higher overtones with the sound lathing, right? And then the other unique thing about the cymbal design is the size of the bell and the fact that the bell itself is hammered as well as the rest of the cymbal. Um, cymbals that have an unla uh, 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 unhammered bell have a very clear, single-like pitch. Cymbals that have hammered bells, it like splits the pitch and makes it more complex. So instead of one tone, you hear four or five tones when you hit the bell, right? The other thing is, the large bell concept comes from the big band drummers of the 50s and 60s. You know, if you check out the drum kits of Buddy Rich, Louis Belson, Papa Joe Jones, uh, Panama Francis, Sonny Greer, they had their main, their main rides all had this big bell, and it helps for the symbol to project. 